Man animal conflict is a state specific disaster in Kerala. What does it mean? Which common antibiotic will India start manufacturing again? And what you must read on Women's Day today. Hello everyone, I am Manish Srivastav and I'm here with the top three reads, the must reads from the Indian Express today. Now, the very first pick comes from the explained section and the explained section has this explained policy article which talks about an issue which uh, has been in news since a long time and this is the man-animal conflict and specifically in Kerala where uh, you know there is a state specific disaster which has been associated with it. So the thing which should come to your mind that it is related to Kerala then why it is important it is state specific but it has you know a relevance which is pan India it is an environment ecology related uh, aspect also is there and also policy related aspect so why is it in news the very first paragraph of this explainer written by Shadu Philip tells you amid repeated deaths from animal attacks and rising anger over them Kerala on Wednesday declared man animal conflict as a state specific disaster becoming the first state in the country to do so Okay, so it is the first state in the country to do so, very clearly written in the first paragraph. Now, the thing which should come to your mind is that what is actually the change? So, at the heart of this particular change is the Wildlife Protection Act. So, basically, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the management of man-animal conflict is the responsibility of the Forest Department according to the Wildlife Protection Act. Also, a hint that you should know a little bit of wildlife protection act here but once the issue is declared as state specific as mentioned in this explainer the onus to deal with its shift to the state disaster management authority which powered by the disaster management act can take quicker and more decisive action remember the ex officio chairman of such a body is the chief minister now, so what exactly is going to change? This particular paragraph tells us that once an issue is declared a state-specific disaster or a national disaster, the Disaster Management Authority can take quick decisions and actions overriding all other norms. Also, district collectors can directly intervene in their capacity as the chairman of the district disaster body. Okay. Now, the attention in this particular explainer should also go to a paragraph which tells us about two important sections of this particular, uh, you know, this particular Disaster Management Act. This is Article 71 and Article 72. So, the article or I'm sorry, the Section 71, I'm correcting myself here, and Section 72 of the Disaster Management Act that no court except the Supreme Court or a High Court shall have jurisdiction to entertain any suit or proceeding in respect of anything done by relevant authorities in pursuance of any, conf any power conferred by this Act. And Section 72 says that, uh, Section 72 of the Act says that the provisions of the Act will have an overriding effect on any other law during the specific period that a disaster has been declared. Now, interestingly, the last paragraph of this particular explainer also tell us about other such disasters. For example, in 2015, Odisha had declared snake bite a state-specific disaster. In 2020, Kerala declared COVID as a state-specific disaster. Besides, heat waves, sunburns, and sunburns and sunstrokes have been declared. So, in 2019, the phenomena of soil whipping in 2017 and lightning and coastal erosion in 2015 okay now associated with the same topic the same theme is an important editorial a very small but an important editorial which actually revolves around that though there has been a policy and it's a policy question but there's also a debate okay so i'll take you to the edi uh, editorial section and the editorial uh, headline or the you know the major the bold line or the headline is terms of coexistence so and the excerpt says kerala's declaration of human animal conflict as a disaster as a state disaster 
must spur debate on conservation and development. Okay, so these two words, conservation and development are the buzzwords whenever you're talking about this particular theme. There's one particular line in the first paragraph which catches your attention. The time has also come to look at the issue from, the, from beyond the perspective of emergency. And also in the second paragraph, the, 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 the debate has came around is key highlight here that with forest thinning out, wildlife, especially elephants, and, increase, and uh, increasing, increasingly now leopards have dispersed into areas with high density of human population. The conflict intensifies when people try to chase away animals with searchlights, crackers or guns, making them even more aggressive. So in this particular paragraph, mein, you know, thoda sa, the other side of the debate is also shown. And therefore, you have explainer editorial ko saath mein agar aap padhenge to ek pura topic jo hai wo acche se aapko samajh mein aayega and it will be easier for you in your objective as well as in your descriptive examinations okay now this is the first pick and now coming to the second pick the second pick is also from the explainer the explained page and when i talk about the explained page there is this uh, uh you know a big explainer or on India to manufacture penicillin G again and why it was stopped. Now, obviously, pehle to wo word kya hai, the, the key word jo yahan pe hai, uske baare mein you should know. And of course, why, if it's, it's it is going to restart or it's going to manufacture again, then why it stopped? All right, these are the two important things which you should remember. So the very first paragraph uh, written by Anona Datta, Anona Dutt, says that India will start manufacturing the com common antibiotic penicillin G later this year, three decades after the country's last plant shut down. Okay, and it was announced last week by our health minister. Also, this is one of the successes of the government's production link incentive scheme. Okay, the PLI scheme launched during the pandemic to promote domestic manufacturing. The scheme gives incentives to companies on incremental sales of products manufacturing in domestic units so please pay attention to this particular paragraph which also talks about this particular scheme so not only the keyword <coughs> which is the focus here but also the, the the scheme becomes very important now this small box tells you that what is the what is pencil ng and it, it says that it is the active pharmaceutical ingredient that is API, remember, used in several common antibiotics and API is the main ingredient of a drug responsible for bringing about its desired effects. Like many other APIs, penicillin G was phased out of production in India after cheaper Chinese products flooded the market. The last plant to stop production of the antibiotic was Torrent Pharma in Ahmedabad. Okay, so this is what uh, this small paragraph gives you a definition. It tells you why it was stopped. The China, ch ch uh, the Chinese influence is there. And then it also tells you about the API. And remember, you have to also keep in mind about the, the uh, production link incentive scheme, the PLI scheme. Okay. So this uh, explainer is important from the perspective of science and technology, health, and uh, therefore read it uh, in a better manner uh, try to note down points from here now the last pick today comes from the editorial section again and it is a combination of two three editorials today today uh, the editorial talks about women's day and specifically women's specific issue uh, the very first written by uh, Maja Daruwala, who is the writer and chief editor of India Justice Report and executive director, Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, the bias that must go. And the headline still tells you that why you have to read it. And also the excerpt, the excerpt says, even when women find space in institutions such as police and judiciary, their progress is hobbled. Okay, so it talks about judiciary, women in judiciary and police. It says that there are women in judiciary and police, but still it gives you, you know, it, it tries to take you to a thought process where you can ask yourself, is that enough? Okay, and this, this particular block tells you a little bit about judiciary. 
A quick back of the envelope estimation shows there are more about, there are only about 3 lakh women in the justice delivery system. Quotas have helped them get in. But even when they are included, inevitably, women's place remains restricted to the lower echelons. If 35% of subordinate judges are women, the number comes down to 13% in the high court. In the Supreme Court today, there are only three women judges. And then, of course, this editorial also talks about women in police. So pay attention to this editorial, but please read it along with uh, the editorial or the, the, the editorial on the ideas page written by Preeti Adani. Uh, and the title is She the Enabler. Addressing gender gaps in employment makes for more resilient health society. The way this editorial or this idea page column is written tells you how you should write an essay or descriptive answers. Beautiful introduction and very good examples. You can make the best use of them. Three paragraphs of this particular editorial which you must read are these. The first and I quote, much has also been written about how society and the economy can leverage the untapped human potential of Indian's, Indian women's population. A 2018, 2018 report by McKinsey noted that women contributed only 18% to the GDP of India, despite constituting 48.4% of the population. The report further noted that the bridging the that bridging the gender gap in employment could potentially elevate India's GDP by 30%. The case is a compelling today as it was then. And then in the very next paragraph, it talks about that there is a growing evidence of social and health benefits to the family unit that women are economically engaged. And in the third paragraph, the paragraph which follows it, it talks about OECD and the certain numbers in, the, in women in the labor force, the percentage, uh, ready-made fodder for your exams if you want to write them. Also, there is a very interesting uh, you know, a video, a documentary or a video uh, on the YouTube channel of the Indian Express by the title, Why It Is Hard for Women to Be in Politics. You know, such questions can be asked in your essays, such questions it can be asked in your interview, like for relating youth and politics, women and politics. It gives you a first-hand perspective, so you must watch it. Uh, and, you know, you never know, you can take away some great points for your exam. That's all from me today. We'll meet next time with three must-reads from the Indian Express. You can tell me your three must-reads at manas.shrivastha at indianexpress.com. That's all. Think smart, work hard, conquer your goal. Bye-bye.